Good evening, everyone. I, Steffi Sahu, from River Kaveri, feel privileged to introduce such a distinguished personality who is passionate, result-oriented, and collaborated HR leader, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Singh, Global Head HR, KPIT Technologies Limited. Sir has a GPHR certification, is an alumni from IIM Calcutta, and has done his post-graduation from the National University of Singapore on Lee Kuan Yew Scholarship. This esteemed personality has more than 18 years of experience across various organizations. To name a few, co-founder of Olito, Global Head HR, Elkem Laboratories, Head HR South Region and Corporate Functions, Alcon India, Senior HR Manager, Infosys, Banking and many more. Currently, he is the member of Senior Management of KPIT and leading HR functions globally. He has a keen interest in mentoring, teaching and blogging. Sir is a visiting faculty of many renowned institutes. He received special recognition from Elkame, Growing Talent, Elkon Asia, and also grabbed the Infosys Excellence Award. Now, I would like to call Sir to address the future managers and help them pave a path. Sir. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Uh, it's nice to be among students. It takes me back to close to, I have been a student three times in my career. Uh, I completed my graduation in 1997. Then again, 2006-07, I went to campus in Singapore. And again in 2009-10, I was in IAM Kolkata. I am still a student. So the first message I want to leave to all of you is that it doesn't matter from where you come or which institute you are studying. You know, there will always be people who will be coming from the premier institutes or the better colleges. The power of continuous learning will take you where you want to go. I have a habit of uh, reading, uh, writing letters to myself and what Peter Drucker calls self-feedback exercise. So he says that every once in six months or one year you write something, two to three goals which you want to do. And then again assess after six months or nine months how much you have achieved. And if you do for a couple of years, you will find out what your strength is. Because if you have set a goal for yourself, and if you are able to achieve it, then you are good in it. If you are not able to achieve, then there is something missing. Hold, so the second message which I want to leave it to you is that hold yourself accountable for a very high standards. In the case of failure, there is this concept called fundamental attributional error. We try to internalize all success. So whatever success has happened to us, it is because of us. And we externalize all failure. So whatever failure has happened, it is because of environment or, you know, somebody else. I think the better approach is to play it reverse way. Whenever we are extremely successful, we should think, what were the factors which made us lucky? So you, we realize what we could have done better even when we are successful. And when we are, of course, did not achieve success, then what are the things which we are within our control, which we could have done better? I would like to keep it interactive you know, a little bit. So let me ask you a question. How many of you read newspapers daily? I already heard from Institute that, no, that there is already program. Okay, so this is a decent number. So can you people tell me which is the most valued company in the world as of now? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's changing a little bit. Right now, I think a few days back, it was Microsoft. Who is CEO of Microsoft? Satya Nadella. What we can learn from his career is that he, I was just talking to, I think, two students who were coming. He himself is example 
of the power of continuous learning. He did his engineering from Manipal. I don't know how many of you are aware. You are aware? Now you see in the hierarchy of institutes compared to IITs and other premiers, it is not there. But still he is not only the CEO of the most valued company, he made it most valued company. I don't know how many of you know the history of uh, Microsoft in last decade. Post 2014, its capitalization or the performance in the markets have significantly improved after his coming. We can make career only when we are really good in it. And how do we know in which things we are good in it? So life continuously gives us signals. One signal of course is our academic performance. Now you can plot a data driven graph. How much marks you got in which subject in 10, then plus 2, then graduation, then MBA. Uh, see, till 30 years back, there was this theory that there is a strong correlation between the academic excellence or IQ and the success in life. But when it was, I think Daniel Goldman, he examined what makes a great leader. He came with a concept called emotional intelligence. So what it says that, and the first thing it says starts with the self-awareness. So uh, do I truly know myself? What are my strengths? What are my limitations? What are my behavioral patterns? What makes me happy? What makes me frustrated? With the effort, of course, we can change anything. Now we can change our behavioral pattern. We can make ourselves. But it's better to make something out of what we are really good at. I will, again, because it, I have to share my life experiences. So in 1995, I went for SSB interview, Service Selection Board, National Defense Academy, Bhopal. First time I was not recommended and I still remember uh, and it was very disappointing to me because I was not very prepared also, uh, maybe I had taken it lightly. Uh, but I remember very clearly the officer who came to address all the people who were not successful because in service selection board any of you if you have no, uh, it's 1 is to 12 or 1 is to 13 ratio. So most of the people anyway they go there, they don't make it. But he gave a very good example, he said, and it's, you should, it's, it will, I still remember it. He says, suppose P.T. Usai is put to silver screen and Sri Devi is put to track and field, what will happen? So what he was trying to say is that you are not successful here. That doesn't mean that you will not be successful elsewhere else. Maybe your performance itself is not up to the mark because many people clear in second and third attempt. But still majority people will not clear it. But then still they are very much successful in the other spheres of life. So how do we find out what we are really good at? Like I said, it, it, it requires deep reflection. And it also requires to have feedback from the very trustworthy and people who are really highly competent. So they can also tell us what we are really good at. You, are, you people are in, in maybe next, after one year, you'll go to internship and uh, you'll enter the corporate world. And suppose, I, I can tell you, so let's take out my field itself in HR. So HR is again not a monolithic field. There are many sub-functions. There's compensation and benefit, there is talent management and OD, there is recruitment, there is learning and development, then there is HR generalist, then there is a transactional HR. Not everybody is good in everything. So there also I think it, it, it will help you know, in the, whenever you go there, then you find out what you are really good at and each of these sub-functions requires different competencies from the others. But what really matters is that the people who are really fast learner. Uh, one thing more I want to ask you, so I think three, four company name you people have already told. Can you people name which are the top, say, seven, eight companies in the world? Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Alibaba, Alphabet, yeah, it's Google, Alphabet is the, no, the whole, 
Walmart was there. Now, if you see Walmart, so that is one thing which you people should know. No, it's not. Berks here, Hathaway, yes. Tencent, yes. Alibaba, we already spoke. So if you see, I, I, what I want to say, if you just go a decade back, and then you will see the top 10 company in the world, at least eight out of 10 were different. They are no longer there. All these seven, eight companies are new in trend, maybe except Berks, Hathaway, and Microsoft. What does it show? And there is a very interesting study, you people should know, that out of the global 500, Fortune 500 companies, as they are called, in 1980s, 70% companies survived to the next decade. Now this ratio has come down to 30%. So with that much of financial muscle, if the organizations are still struggling to survive, and why is it so? The same line which I said in the beginning, power of continuous learning. What the products or services if I, we are offering or the organizations are offering, somebody else come with a better value proposition, then naturally that company will take over. So be aware of the early trends. And what happens when you are aware of the early trends, you become a Google. So Google came with the search engine optimization and the rest is history. Similarly, you see the Amazon e-commerce. And, and you can go and think, same about the Apple in the terms of computing or the entertainment or the, uh, how they uh, bring the whole smart telephony. And the companies which were left behind, and, and, and you can think of the names, Nokia, you people are aware? Yes, sir. Motorola? Yes, sir. Blackberry? Yes, sir. And all this happened in a very short span, just four to five years. And the same it will continue to happen in future also. So if it happens to organizations, it also helps us that as a professionals, we are aware what are the existing and emerging trends. So like you people told already which are the top 10 companies, you should also know which are the fastest growing companies, which are the fastest growing sectors, because the opportunities will be there more and more. Uh, how do we learn, basically? So because this, this concept I want you to you know, put into your mind. So how many of you are on Facebook? And equal number of people will be on Instagram also. See, the number of hands which went up, and I just asked newspaper, I will be more specific. How many of you read business daily, business newspaper daily? The best gift you can give to yourself Whichever stream you are choosing, be it HR or marketing or strategy or operations or finance, is to develop the habit of reading newspaper. Like you don't miss your breakfast or your lunch a day, don't miss any newspaper. And again, reading newspaper doesn't mean that whatever is being dished out, you just memorize. You seek the facts and then you critique it. You form your own opinion. And the same is true, why for newspaper, why for everything else, including what I am talking right now, what Gautam Buddha said. Unless something passes your own tests of reason, don't accept it at the face value. So, the lifelong learning or the passion as we call, in HR this the model is called 70-20-10. And I will give the example so that it, you remember after some time. How do you learn swimming? Life is like swimming. If you go to a classroom, and now you are given, say, what, 10 hours, 100 hours of lectures on swimming, or you go to a Google or YouTube and watch how much videos of swimming, will you become a swimmer? You go to a very good swimmer, the world's best class swimmer, and you talk to him, and you talk to him daily, how he has become a world class swimmer, and what are the tips he has for you, and you spend much time with him interacting, still, will you become a good swimmer? You will become a swimmer, then you go and practice in any water body, be it the pool or river or pond, whatever, and practice it daily. And while you are practicing, then whatever you have read in the classroom or the YouTube videos or interaction with that swimmer will help you. So what we call 10% is the learning or the whatever the reading part you say, be it the virtual classroom or digital. 
20 percentage interaction with any senior person who is really good. I will not say senior, I will say good person, competent person. And 70 percent is applying. And that is true for all competencies. Competencies is basically, as you will come to know, it, these are skill, knowledge, and attributes which make, which are needed to make play a role very successfully. So irrespective of, again, whichever stream you are choosing, the number one competence is, is business acumen. Do you really understand how company is making money in the terms of financials? How is the top line? How is the bottom line? How is the cash flow? Where it is compared to industry leaders? What it needs to do from move from here to where the industry leader is? And then again we say the change management. Change management for self also. Suppose we take any goal for ourselves. We want to improve, say, articulation or you want to improve your analytics. From here to here, how do you go? So you have to make this 70, 20, 10. You have to identify the courses or you have to identify the trainings or certifications which you are going to do. You have to identify one or two people who are very good in that and interact with them. And the 70% take some assignments, challenging assignments, and do into it. Uh, one more important thing I want to say to you is seek sufficient information before you take any plunge. What I mean to say, uh, this concept is called information asymmetry. That it is self-interest which sometimes people portray the information which may not be right. And the classical example may be, or maybe the information is not being told to you the way it is. So employee, when it goes to an employer, they present themselves that they are the best. And the same happens for employer also. Employer also tries to present that you know, they are the best companies to work for. And whenever you are choosing any organization or choosing any individual to work with, I always advise that do a little bit of research, 360 degree feedback as I say. What is the values for which the organization stands? The manager with whom you are going to work, how he is as a professional. He, he himself regarded as a good mentor or a good professional in the, in the peers. Uh, make effort to associate yourself with a good organization, value-based organizations, and the good professionals. In the beginning of the career, don't go after money. I think if you learn and if you are better than others, I can tell you, few lakhs here or there in the beginning doesn't make a difference. Once you go at the leadership level, in one month, compensation will take care of your four or five years of deficit. The key is that you have to be better. And how do you get better? By associating with the organizations which value learning, which reward learning, who encourage the people to take risks. Uh, one more thing I want to leave with you is the grittiness. You take any goal for yourself, it's not easy to achieve. So don't leave it middle way. Push yourself. Like I said, so suppose, I mean, one specific thing if I want all of you to take is to master Excel. People underestimate, but it will help you in much, much better way, whether you are in HR or finance or a strategy or operations. Looking at the large volume of data and how do you get insights? The same goes for the presentations. And how do you learn it? So it's not easy. Mastering any skill, they say, it requires 10,000 hours. If you really become world class and 1,000 hours to become an expert. So suppose the MBA, the years I divide into so 700 days or seven, every day if you practice one, one and a half hour, then at the end of the, uh, your course, you'll become really good in Excel or any skill. I mean, these are the two things which only I want to share with you. Also in the beginning, you are in the beginning of the career. So don't make very long term plans. You know, sometimes what happens, the life is not always upward curve. I mean, I have changed six sectors. I worked in public sector, then I went to government. When I went to do my MBA, I had no clue I'm going to land in HR. 
it all happened by coincidence but once i was in hr then i really made an effort to understand what where i can really add value so identify the biggest challenges which the organizations has design some intervention with working with the key stakeholders and whenever you are not getting results then be a very fast learner you don't have to examine at the end of some time because if things are not working and no we will know at the early science itself we are not, it's not working that is what we call agility is so make the corrections as you are going along not at the end of the journey so that you if, even if there are some misses you reach the destination uh, last but not the least all of us aspire for happiness in life so there is the research now and i encourage all of you to read ted i don't know how many of you read ted talks they are a very useful source because almost all world thought leaders be it in the technology or the leadership or if you are interested in happiness or motivation or machine learning or technology it's there free so what the one of the most read article says that the single most attribute which determines happiness is the quality of close relationships so may you foster friends who help you throughout the life it's not again the quantity but the quality and the same in your personal life also maybe with the siblings or the family or the friends a few trustworthy relations with whom you can confide in and who can give you the honest feedback you may not like at times but that will help you uh, that's all from my side uh, i think if one thing which i want all of you to remember is that put focus on learning it's your life your career you are the architect of it anybody else you know be it your be it our you know mentors or the managers or the parents or the institute they can play a supplementary role if we are a fast learner then we ourselves will know what is working and what is not working if you have any questions i'll be happy to take Yes, yes. Uh, you went to SSB, right? In Al Bhopal. Yes. Okay, so, uh, as you have went to SSB and you didn't get recommended, and then uh, how did you overcome from that? And you went to even to join private sector, like completely. That is a completely different genre, and you entered into a completely different sector, right? So, how did it? How did you overcome that? even i went to sb that's why i'm asking you like it is completely tough for me like <laughs> to that field and this different like completely different no sir yes so i did not tell the second part the first time when i did not clear ssb i analyzed myself very well and second time i cleared it so <laughs> in the merit list so i was declared medically unfit and uh, it was tough phase of my life because uh, it was tuberculosis which was in early phase so four drug regime i mean in india i don't know how many of you know half of the people are passive carrier of tuberculosis and approximately 1.5 crore people develop tuberculosis every year this is very common so then i like i said so i belong to a very lower middle class family my father was a teacher he led uh, emphasis on very high quality of education so i completed my graduation in 1997 and in 1997 itself i was selected in state service commission again mp state commission uh and you know i did not join it though because i wanted to join civil services the first attempt i did not clear civil services so i to my father was getting retired so there was a pressure also to get some jobs so i joined the state bank of india as a po but i continued preparing for civil services
and then I was selected in civil services. My rank was 152. I went to Ministry of Communication and IT. <laughs> and I had a very good memory of my association with government. But like I said, I, I thought that I can deliver more value than there. And that is why I resigned. So again, it's journey, like in life you say it's a journey and you know you can, like Steve Jobs say, you can always analyze it better in hindsight, what are the things we could have done better. But I think given the stage at which I am, I think I am at a very satisfying phase of my life, having taken all the risks and there is much more to do. Now, I don't know how many of you know about KPIT, it's, it is one of the fastest growing automotive IT companies in India. This year our financial growth was 25% plus. If you compare with, what was the Indian economic growth rate? Any idea, anybody this year? Somewhere, yeah. So depending upon the source, 6.5 to 7. And what is the Indian IT sector growth? So this is what I'm saying. Know about trends. So Indian economy is growing at 6.5 to 7%. Then which are the sectors which are growing faster than that? And in those sectors, which are the companies in fact growing faster than the average? So Indian IT sector growth, if you see last three to four years, have always been high, high single digit. So 9%, 8 to 9%. In that, like I said, we have delivered 25% financial performance and this year also looks equally good. So. And, and when I said that you know, okay, the single most important thing matters when you join an organization is the organization values. And there are many companies which can pay you higher. And I can tell you that I have known many peers and the seniors who have made the mistakes of joining organizations or the roles with a higher salary and they have come to regret it because all of us value autonomy. You understand? The freedom to do the things we want and also the learning. So like I said, try to make yourself better and you know money will follow. It may take few years here and there. So in my case, I think I have, I have always you know, analyzed myself and, and you know, sometimes things have not worked. I don't think that I can claim that things have always worked. But I have been very honest with myself. If things have not worked, like my startup did not work, frankly speaking. Uh, after one and a half years, we sold to a bigger group. But it was a great learning experience and I always want to take a shot at entrepreneurship. Uh, so that's how sometimes you learn, like they, they say, you, know, you sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I think sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, you don't lose. Okay. So I think there are less questions. So generally what I do when I interact with a lot. Okay, there is one more hand. Yes, please. Yeah, that's true. So I am blessed with a twin brother. <laughs> and though we are not identical twin, but he is my best friend also. And so... He is very good in analyzing, you know, and there are, again, there are very couple of friends who think are always uh, share their honest views on what we can do together or you know, what I need to do better. But more importantly, it's also about the, the trust, you know, okay, suppose something is needed, can you truly bank, bank on the few relations in the life, that is what it comes to, right? So I think I am blessed with a few friends and no, I, I, whenever there has been a need, they have always been by my side. So the key is, you know, like what uh, Kennedy said, don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So, <laughs> the, the essence of making good relations is that first you really figure it out how they are behaving with others. So are they really genuine, authentic people? 
and then no the, the the question has to be asked that i should be of the, the i should be in their list that if they have to ask something or you know something when they need then i should be there and i think if we are able to place us in that position then the other question will not arise because if we are there then they are going to be there good evening sir uh, sir uh, my question is as we know that uh, uh, many I, uh, many engineers from it sector working in usa uh, from india going to us and uh, opening their startups or working but uh, now uh, mr donald trump has strictened the rules uh, about giving the visas to the people and as you mentioned that uh, uh, india is uh, the it sector is uh, growing very rapidly in india so what do you think it will be affect positively or no negatively to indian it sector see i so mark my words i said indian it sector is growing at 9 to 10% i did not say it's growing very fast i said kpi it is growing very fast so growing very fast means you should be growing almost no because please take see so in see we are still a very developing country so if you see in the terms of per capita income per capita income if you see what is the size of indian economy very good somebody has hit the nail on the head 2.3 trillion dollars and what is the size of us economy and what is india's population and what is us population so you see we have now close to four and half times population and our economy size is still seven and eight times lesser you don't have to go to the per capita what it means that our per capita income in real terms is 40 times 35 to 40 times lesser than us and why is it so i mean there are whole historical reasons so i'm coming to your point it may affect little bit but i think the right question to ask is and indian it sector is figuring out a ways you know and and if you see a little bit of do a demographic analysis the whole developed world is growing through a crisis where it's aging population declining population growth rate and india has advantage there though of course the advantage also is hampered by the fact that the quality of human resources or the skill which we need it's still not there but i think maybe these are minor blips i don't think that is going to impact and it has not impacted growth so far little bit here and there no it, it, it may impact that i think at your stage you people should be asking questions is that what is that i can do to make the best version of myself now, i always tell people you now when they are going for jobs and you now they say that i am not getting any opportunities what do i need to do i think that then there it's just that life is sending you signal that whatever you have learned or whatever you are it's not getting recognized why operate at a level you no know, we are when you are one among the crowd try to make your unique place you now be make yourself so good and you know right now the age of social media i think all of you can pick one or two topics become master in it start writing blogs on it read journals again i i could not say enough sources i just told you times of india or economic times or hindu or whatever it is and td whatever again stream you are choosing there are three four journals subscribe them these are free harvard business review is free few articles mckinsey quarterly is free bcg perspective is free every week at least read two three articles again so so that you are aware of what is happening so i think the la at at the stage in which you are in it's very important for you to be aware of the macro trends or the global trends but the focus should be always on the self what is it that i can do what is it within your control and I'm, i'm just coming suppose it comes to words and you know there is already a newspaper article that h1b cap is going to be put at 15% i mean that is outside your control you can do nothing about it what is it within your control which you can do so excellence in academics during these two years is within your control identify a very few good mentors from the industry that is within your control master a few skills which i said which is within your control so put focus where within your control is and give your best shot at it
Can you repeat? Yeah, so, no, that's true. Please take a seat. No, the, there is this structural mismatch. So you see 14 to 15 lakh engineers are passing out of our engineering colleges. And Indian IT sector has capacity to absorb so close to 1 to 1.5 lakh engineers. I'm talking you the larger mismatch. So close to 9 to 10 lakh engineers, despite their effort, they're not getting placed. So what they do, they pursue MTech, MS. Some of them go to the lower skill jobs. The opportunities are there in the niche area which he is saying, so artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud, mobility. Now, how Indian IT sector is trying to deal with it is that almost all large companies you see they have now very rigorous training program. So even a fresher which comes to any, any IT services, they are not deployed to the project. Three to six months depending upon the stream from which they are coming. They are given training and then they are deployed. Now these NIST skills are not so easy to learn also. So what is happening there again, there some of the people who are who are really fast learners or you know, those who have worked, you know, they are getting opportunities. Uh, companies are trying to develop in-house talent. But I think still there is a gap between what we can develop and what do we want. So the lateral hiring is also not uncommon in these areas. And it will continue to be this, the same trend for any new emerging thing. That is why I told you, find it out at what is the new emerging thing, be it in HR or not be it in finance or be it in say, strategy or marketing and try to learn why it is happening, what is that I can learn. And I think you will also, so on the domain side, you know, because MBA is more on domain side, not on the technology side. So it's very much important you, know, you to align yourself with the, organizations which are agile you know like the classical example if you miss the bus is Walmart somebody was saying Walmart is one of the most valued companies. it was it no longer is if you see the market capitalization of Walmart since last 12 to 13 years it has remained flat why is it so because it missed the bus of e-commerce of course it has tried to acquire uh, Flipkart and is trying to you know, match it but it's not easy it's, it's not that easy to bridge the gap when you miss it. The first mover advantage is tremendous in the industry and tremendous for professionals also. If you if you take an early lead and if you're a fast learner, then I think the value you will generate for yourself also will be disproportionate. Okay, so what I will do, I think there are clearly six rows I see, right? Before I leave, I would like to hear back from you one key thing which I have delivered so that it becomes part of your memory. I don't want to deliver a lecture and then after that you forget it and which you will implement also. So each row is starting one point. So I will, anybody can, one person raise hand and then say. We start with the top left. So I did say that excellence in academic matters, but if you see what I said that application matters more. So I want you to leave with the thought that the percentage in the marks matters, and you know, IQ matters, the scores matters, but how we are going to apply that matters more. So if you go again to the 70, 20, 10, 10% 10 is reading or the training or I say academic excellence. 70% is application or the experience, how I am able to deliver, it's like swimming again I said. So academic excellence matters but I, I am again looking for more specific, suppose academic excellence itself or excellence in life itself we want. So remember this concept, 70, 20, 10, if you have to understand how to launch a brand, suppose you are a marketing guy, let, let me tell you, so how you are going to do it. So again you have to read few articles, 10%, then go and talk to few brand managers or to the marketers how they have done it 
and 70% is you have to be part of the team which is going to launch a brand. Or say you are in HR and you have to work on say your, your company attrition is very high and you have to bring it down. So again 10% you go and read what are the retention strategies, how is your compensation compared to the market, how is the career companies providing, how is the manager's emotional connect with the organization, what are the other policies and work environment. Then 20% again I said you go and talk to some experienced professional and then 70% is you take one or two business line where the attrition is very high and you apply these concepts. If you are able to bring it down then fine, if you are not able to bring it down then there is something amiss. Then you have to again rework. Yes, middle row. Yes. So don't get disheartened by failures. Aim for big goals. You know, India is in need of the people who can aim big, who can dream big, who can make it big. And when you aim big, then there are chances that many times you'll encounter not success as per. But then be very fast learner. We say as because the failure is not sudden lead comes. You can see the trend in where you are heading. And if you are a really very fast learner, then you will do the course corrections so that you don't head in that direction. Yes. Yeah, this is the most lifelong, most important message. Never stop learning. It's not about MBA. It's not about when you get placed. Because and then learning again, I say it's about reading, interactions and more on application aspect. So keep yourself updated. That is why I said it's very important to develop few habits. Re develop the habit of reading through newspapers. And when you start with the newspapers, read the business page, then the editorial, then maybe international affairs. Read few journals like I said. McKinsey, BCG, Harvard, Business Review, whatever comes to your mind in your chosen field. But like I said, reading is one part, smaller one. Have a network of mentors, which I said 20% is not only the people who are close to you, we learn from the people who are better than us. So surround yourself with the best in the people whom you can find out. Make an effort to people who are really good. Only then you'll become really good. And then again, so. So continuously learning through 70, 20, 10. I mean, almost the same point which he repeated, but it's fine. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, run for excellence. Money will follow, I can tell you. And which I told you also, okay, when you reach and why I'm saying it, that, you know, suppose their leadership level, most of the people you see, they earn a digit salary. Let me come to there. So in one month, what you will make, which will cover you the deficit of years, if you build that excellence in you. And again, money part, which I said also, associate yourself with the people with values and the organization with the values. And better still, become one, so that the people will take pride in getting associated with you. Yes. Seek sufficient information before you plan and don't leave your goals in between. Yes. Yes, yes, please. Yes, find your what you are good at. We are not good at everything. I will just close this aspect then I will come to you. So, find you are really good at, so become self-aware. And it's not only what we are good at, what we are not good at also. And then learn to live with the limitations because we cannot be perfect. Be aware of your own behavioral pattern, you know, what makes you angry, what makes you frustrated, what makes you happy and seek sufficient information is very much important when you are choosing an organization, that organization is really good and who is the manager, you know, most importantly, organization may be good but the manager is not good, what do you do? And in a lighter vein, the same is true for marriage also, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's very much important <laughs> to find out what the real package is. Don't get too much, <laughs> no offense meant by marketing. <laughs> Not to offense to marketing, but I'm saying it's marketing is what? Positioning, no perception. But I think we should, we should be also focused on reality. Put your learning into practice. 
yes put your learning into practice and practice a lot like i said i can share one data with you uh, we started the campus program in hr a few years back and then what we realized that many people who are coming they are not good in excel so we said okay excel test will put a part of assessment itself 113 people came last year to kpit i think only 11 cleared excel test and it was not very complex it was just little bit of analytics and we look up and, and, and you know the, the pivot table but little bit of twist also was there so, so because it takes time what i'm saying takes time so you know find some excel gurus that can be the best gift you can give to yourself so it doesn't matter from where you come the power of company will take you where you want to go yes and <clears throat> i think i i was sharing with again the students who came with me that you no know, if you look at the cxo level or ceo level more than 60 70% you will see they will be coming from the you know the institutes which are not known or you know not not there in the top and i gave you the example of satya nadella himself and why is it so because the hunger matters the passion for excellence matters the power of continuous learning matters if you start resting on your solace or you know start taking you no know, things for granted then the things things will not happen yes so, so you said uh, that yes be ready for challenges don't buckle up it's it's a great opportunity to show our best any crisis is the best opportunity to show our best sir so you said that since you are at the beginning of your career don't make long term goals just go with the flow yeah so what i mean to say also that while it's important to have those goals but the environment is changing the opportunities around us are changing you know and if we keep fixated with one thing then no we it is not so we have to keep moving along with the opportunities or whatever is offer comes before us and then no, make a best out of it so one thing i learned from sir here so one thing i learned from you today is that the take uh, see the upcoming trends and always take the first mover advantage yes so be aware of trend if i say so no more most organizations what they are starting no and especially agile organization each key management meeting or a strategic meeting they start with tell us what are the two three key important trends the early important trends so that it gets registered in your mind so which are the new of offerings coming new services coming where the growth opportunities are where the world is moving overall Yeah, this is Kennedy. I mean, I just quoted from him, but it's very much important, you know, to to see. I don't know how many of you realize. Everybody sitting in this room is is a is a privileged person. If you look at the massive inequality which our country has, and the world has indeed, you know, it says that if you have a two dollar in you and you have a bank account, you are better off than one third people in the world. What is two dollar? One forty rupees and a bank account which all of us have. we are already better than one third of the people i mean we are better than maybe 50 60% so what it means also that we are in this position so let's make the best version of ourselves and let's not forget to extend the helping hand to those people who are less privileged than us so excuse me sir yes sir yes sir so, so you said make corrections as when you go around and not when you finish yes so this is what agility is you know uh, as you go to industry you say we call it agile agile is nothing but you know you don't analyze something after the event has happened while the event is happening or no you can see a little bit and then you can say what is the trend where i am heading and then you make the corrections along you change your strategy you change your action planning so you have told that uh, failure is the first step of learning we should critically analyze what uh, where we have lagged by preparing the thing and uh, by introspecting our lacking part we should overcome that in the next uh, next uh, trial which we are giving to it so one word which she said you know while i did tell you about the reading or the mentorship or the feedback and the experience or the challenging assignments 
in each three elements introspection or deep reflection is very much important so whenever things are not working you know so once in a week develop this habit of spending say 15 to 20 minutes time just me time you know you think a little bit deeply what I am doing, what is it that I am doing is working, what is it that I am doing is not working, so that I stop doing it, what is it that I start doing, you know, this is what agile approach is, it's simple word, stop, start, continue, and that can happen only when we deeply reflect, we should not get too much busy, you know, in our lives or, you know, so that we are not getting enough time to deeply think at least once a week also, so it's very much important, introspection or the deep reflection is one of the key attributes of all high achievers. So, say so, so the one thing you said that uh, in, uh, inspired me the most was when you succeed, look at the environmental factors that contributed to your success. And when you fail, look within yourself at what I could do more rather than doing the other way. Yeah, so you yeah. know. The success we say or the life is a function of ability, effort and randomness. So if you are better able than others, naturally you are in advantageous position. But if you are better able than others, then you're, and if your effort is not there, still you will not be able to achieve success. Your ability and effort still can be there, but there are so many random factors, you know. And you know, let's do the random factors in the health itself. So what happened to Steve Jobs, right? And what would have happened if he would have been here? So it, the random things do happen, that is not within our control. So when we are extremely successful, you know, then we should think that you now we are extremely lucky to be what we are, because there are always random elements in the terms of health or an accidents or many, many things. So, Good evening, uh, sir. Uh, thank you for your presentation today. The most important thing which I would take away from you today will be your opening statement to hold yourself accountable, to be credible and be responsible. Yeah, so it's, see what happens once you become part of corporate life, most companies have in one way the other way assessment. And in assessment that means at the end of the year you get a rating, you know, where you're high performer or middle performer and, and you know I have seen at most of the people also that their self-awareness is either low, that means they are really not aware, others are thinking that the person is not really lacking in many significant aspects and the person himself is not aware. And the second aspect is still is that they, they really not think that what they could have done even better. Even when you are successful, you can do things better. And when you are not successful, then of course there are many things which we can we can do better. From that row and then I think, do we have time? Or so time? Uh, sir, I was saying that which inspired me was uh, you said that put your efforts and uh, focus on things which you can control. Yes. So see, like I said, there are so many things beyond our control. Like what he was saying, what the regulatory regime, if it is in the US changes, what we can do. I mean, we have to live with it. Or similarly, something else happens, you know, some policy changes happen. I mean, of course, if you see at that level, then no, we can influence the policy making itself, which the government of India also is trying with the help of NASCOM. But at the end, if the variables which I cannot control, what are the variables I can control? The most important variable all of us can control is our attitude. We say train your mind to be positive in all situations. And it's very much important, you know, to, to always look at the brighter aspects of the life among all the things you know because being optimist I mean optimist I doesn't mean for the sake of optimism optimism but the being optimist and looking at the brighter side it helps a long way in keeping ourselves focused on the goals also so analyze value of yourself analyze value of yourself yes so so the one thing that inspired me the most is life may bless you with hardships, try to win them. So again, I mean, while we'll interact, I'm saying the what I expect from each of you is that that be a little bit more self-discipline, 
So suppose you have identified, now these are the 10, 12 things we have talked about it. So the, again, there is a TED talk which says that all it takes is three weeks to develop a habit. What does it mean that if you have to start reading newspapers, start from tomorrow, you read it for three weeks, it becomes part of your habit. If you are picking journals, start from again tomorrow and then every week you read. And the same goes for any other skill or, or the behavioral change you, which you want to adapt in yourself. So make it, our, make it part of your lifestyle, you know. Once it becomes part of your lifestyle, then it's, then you don't, then you don't have to know. You have to make effort to get out of it. In the beginning, you have to make effort to get into it. But once it becomes part of your life, then like I said, I mean, I'm just not sharing with you. I studied in Hindi medium school and it was a good school. But since 1993, I think when I was in intermediate, I have not missed reading news, two newspapers, even a single day. And and that has helped me also in forming a multidisciplinary approach. So when I look at a problem, I don't look from, from the HR angle. No? We, we look at it from the marketing angle. We look from the change management. You look also from the what are the financial aspects. And you also look also from the overall organization perspective also. So looking at an issue in totality, that also defines a great professional, not the narrow approach of the whichever sectors we are looking into, whichever functions or stream we are part of. So one, excuse me, sir. So one thing I'm going to implement in my life is that you told right in every five to six months, write your goals to yourself and implement. And if it's not implementing, you are missing something and find it out. Yes. And I have been doing this since five, six years, you know, and I think, and it's an article, I think one of the best management gurus of uh, the century, last century was Peter Drucker. And I'll encourage again, irrespective of the article, you read some of the articles which he has written, uh, written including managing oneself. And there only he has put this, so again, I think it will help also. There are so many things to do, but the focus things are this only. And why self-feedback? Because if you have to learn continuously, then you have to give yourself some targets that what are I'm going to do in six months or nine months. And then it's better that you write in the beginning and then analyze after six months. And then again to hold yourself accountable. If you have not been there, then no, then we have to be a little critique of ourselves why we are not able to achieve that. So value relationships. Yes, if you want happiness, Value relationships. And, and and all of you can know, I mean, maybe next one month, whenever you go get time, go and read that TD talk on that happiness. And it's very insightful. And there is, and it is, uh, I think there is another talk in which what they have done, they have analyzed the life of the Many people who have went to Harvard and then they have said, again, what are the key factors which are led to the happiness? And again, studies after studies, it shows, you know, the quality of close relationship determines the happiness in the life. It's not the money, it's not the success. Of course, money matters, success matters. But I think I enjoyed the best phase of my life was whenever I was full time a student. Like I said, I continue to be a student and maybe till my last breath I will continue to be a student. So this is the best phase of your life. You don't have to worry about anything about the financial performance or anything. Almost entire variable is within your control. So if you put your best to it, then surely you will achieve academic excellence. And uh, like I said, identify a few great mentors in the industry and ask them, what is it that they will advise to you? And almost all of them will say that take a few challenging assignments. So when you go to internship also, again, I say value organizations, which are going to give you those challenging assignments and don't look for hours. Many people I've seen, the, the new people also come to nine hours, 10 hours. 
I mean, that is not the right approach. If you really want to be an achiever, then the time should be the least consideration. Whatever it takes to get the work done. If it takes 18 hours, then it takes 18 hours. If it takes all seven days a week, it takes all seven days a week. This is the learning phase of your life. You know, and India needs people who are really excellent and the opportunities are immense. So push the boundary, you know, work as hard as you can. And, you know, I will tell you the sky is the limit. Good luck.